Welcome to Christian Meditation in the Centering Prayer Tradition. We recommend use of audio on your device. Words are also on screen. Welcome to the online meeting of the Christian Meditation Group of Wisdom Centre Romsey. The reflections and readings this evening have been put together for us by Hazel. Enjoy your meditation and thank you for being with us. Through Jesus Christ, by the Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life, we in meditation in this time of crisis pray with all others as one community and one world to one God. We unite with our brothers and sisters of all world traditions. With God is wisdom and understanding. May our ears be attentive. May the meditation of our hearts be for understanding. Through Christ may we seek and find you, acting only according to your will. May we follow his teaching, seeking also the wisdom of the Holy Fathers and Mothers. We commit to love of earth, faithfulness, community, stability, peace and justice making. Letting go of all else, in contemplation we surrender in love to you. Let our sacred word be a symbol of our consent to your loving presence and healing. May we be faithful to this word so that it rises in our hearts awaking that sense of your presence. Some reflections on rhythm. In the past few weeks, for me, staying at home has been an opportunity to live and experience life very differently, but it has also been a great challenge to remain grounded and embodied in the face of so much change and uncertainty both individually and collectively. The need for noticing and accepting the range of emotions I experience and the need for finding a new rhythm have become very important. In a recently published short video, one of the world's leading experts on traumatic stress, Bessel van der Kolk, suggests actions we might take when, in his words, the COVID-19 pandemic leaves us feeling helpless. He defines trauma as being rendered helpless in the face of threat. When you are traumatized, he says, you live in a timeless sense of helplessness, in a state of being frozen. Your whole sense of time disappears. It is about predictability and trust. If the outside world becomes unpredictable, the only thing we can control is our own response to it, thereby bringing a sense of self-agency. So the two things he emphasises most are the need to bring structure into each day and the need to move, to be aware of living in our body. How well the 99-year-old Captain Tom Moore demonstrated both of these in his sponsored walk. And of course, he also had a very clear sense of purpose in that. 
key workers in this crisis, despite huge pressure, may experience a sense of agency through the direct actions that they take to help others, but at times they may still feel helpless when so much is out of their hands and lives are lost. In contrast, those staying at home may feel isolated or less youthful, and the loss of normal routine can be disorientating. For all of us, finding a daily and weekly rhythm or timetable can be very important and will help prevent longer term difficulties arising. How might we find the right routine for us and how might this link with our meditation practice? It seems to me that there are many ways in which we can experience rhythm through meditation as well as ways in which natural rhythms support our meditation or our prayer practices. Not just as we sit in silence but as we mindfully experience and move in our days and our weeks. We might begin by noticing the rhythms already in our lives. In our body we find rhythm in our breath, our heartbeat, our digestive system, our circadian rhythms that help us notice when we need sleep and when we awaken into activity again. And these are different of course for all of us. In our exercise, whichever form that takes, including moving to music, we might perhaps notice how our breath links to the rhythm of movements in our body. In nature around us there are rhythms of day and night, the moon, the tides, the seasons and life cycles, the rings within the trunks of trees, the beat of a butterfly's wings, the chant of a bird's song, and many more. In the short silence that follows, you may like to think of those rhythms that are meaningful to you at this time.
At a retreat on Benedictine wisdom at an abbey in Massachusetts, Dr. Cynthia Bourgeau spoke of the Benedictine rhythms in the practices of Ora e Libora, alone and together. That is, prayer alone, prayer together, work alone, and work together. How might we discern our own pattern of our days? Listen is the first word of the Benedictine rule. When we listen, the human heart hears the call of God, say the monks at the Abbey. In Ecclesiastes, there seems to be a sense of divine universality of time and experience, and a listening to what is meant to be and when. To everything, everything there is a season. From Ecclesiastes 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A, a time to mourn, and a time, time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. John O'Donoghue, the Irish poet, former priest and philosopher, writes about finding our rhythm by listening and noticing what he calls a kindness of rhythm. This reading is from his book Anamkara, The Soul's Rhythm. We should not force ourselves to change by hammering our lives into any predetermined shape. 
we do not need to operate according to the idea of a predetermined pro program or plan for our lives. Rather, we need to practice a new art of attention to our inner rhythm of our days and lives. This attention brings a new awareness of our own human and divine presence. It is far more creative to work with the idea of mindfulness than the idea of will. Too often people try to change their lives by using the will as a kind of hammer to beat their life into proper shape. The intellect identifies the goal of the programme and the will, accordingly, forces the life into shape. This way of approaching the sacredness of one's own presence is externalistic and violent. It brings you falsely outside of yourself and you can spend years lost in the wilderness of your own mechanical spiritual programs. You can perish in a famine of your own making. If you work with a different rhythm, you will come easily and naturally home to yourself. Your soul knows the geography of your destiny. Your soul alone has a map of your future. Therefore, you can trust this indirect, oblique side of yourself. If you do, it will take you where you need to go. But more importantly, it will teach you a kindness of rhythm in your journey. There are no general principles for this art of being. Yet the signature of this unique journey is inscribed deeply in each soul. If you attend to yourself, and seek to come into your own presence, you will find exactly the right rhythm for your life. The senses are generous pathways which can bring you home. As we adjust our posture now for our meditation today, you may wish to pay particular attention to your breath, to the rhythm of your breath, taking a calming deep breath in through your nose and a slow breath out through rounded lips, letting go fully. Then maybe repeat this a few times, perhaps four to six times. If you have a sacred word, you might notice its rhythm, perhaps in time with your breath. During meditation, feel free to notice what it is you need today, whether it be your normal practice, or to simply watch the candle on the screen, or to stretch your body and release tension. And of course, there's no need to complete the full 20 minutes if that, that isn't for you today. Just simply allow your inner rhythm to be heard. We begin the meditation now on the sound of the bell and the bell will be again at the end.
The following poem is an offering of reassurance by Belfast-born poet Derek Mayon. Mayon draws us to attend to what he calls the watchful heart, which seems akin to John O'Donoghue's guiding us to attune to the rhythm of our soul. The poem is called Everything is Going to Be All Right. How should I not be glad to contemplate the clouds clearing beyond the dormer window and a high tide reflected on the ceiling? There will be dying, there will be dying, but there is no need to go into that. The poems flow from the hand unbidden and the hidden source is the watchful heart. The sun rises in spite of everything, and the far cities are beautiful and bright. I lie here in a riot of sunlight, watching the daybreak and the clouds flying. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Closing prayer. Through Jesus Christ, by the Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life, we, in meditation in this time of crisis, pray with all others, as one community and one world, to one God. We unite with our brothers and sisters around the world. Moments of your personal prayer follow. Amen.